threat modeling itself, it seems to be, you know, it could be a, a, a difficult task. And, and you talked about how we kind of turned it into automation these days, but you know, how difficult is it really to put uh, threat models into practice? Uh, how difficult, great question, how difficult it is to put threat modeling in practice. It depends on the size of people or the size of the project or the size of the code base or the development team that you're working with. The more the mass of something, the difficult it is for us, it, it is for that object to move. At the same time, the more the mass of an object, the more force that it is that it requires to move. So think about that from an organization's perspective. You have a startup, uh, a team of two, two scrum teams with uh, three to nine developers. You can get started with threat modeling, implement automation, implement work tracking of threat modeling threats, all of those things within a matter of a month with the greatest levels of maturity. But if you wanna scale that to an enterprise level, then obviously there are there are challenges, right? Challenges that involve uh, processes and, and bureaucracies within the organization. And I don't wanna use the word bureaucracy in a derogatory sense. Of course, they are essential. But at the same time, getting approvals and planning to roll out threat modeling can itself be difficult. But there are some things that can help. Some of the banks that we're working with they are spinning up their own startup versions of their own because they recognize that they're a bank, they need to be regulated. So when they want to launch a virtual banking project, virtual banking product, and they spin up a 100-member development team, they have some amount of freedom within their boundaries to innovate on their own. And we tried threat modeling with them. Uh, first was a training, and then was the consulting that followed afterwards, two days of training. And then the third and fourth day, was actually kicking out those example models that we discussed in training, but then bringing the, their actual models and then threat modeling for those actual models that that team is building. It took about a month's time to get to a certain level of maturity. It was a team of 100 developers. The overall size of that organization was 150. Again, it was a spin-off of a larger bank. On the other hand, when we were working with an energy provider in Europe, it took about two years uh, to, to convey some level of DevSecOps maturity along with threat models. There are lighter ways that you can get started with, and you can simply say, well, I'm good with this threat models, uh, but sometimes security purists might disagree to those approaches because threat modeling, again, uh, it doesn't need to be comprehensive from our opinion and also from some of the industry experts' opinion. As long as you identify threats, you're good. So the, the short answer really is it, is it depends on the size of your organization and the complexities of processes that you have. But there are lightweight approaches like the four-question framework and the stride model that developers obviously love. There's there's another interesting story. We, we did a static analysis training with... Um, with some 20 developers, all experienced with C++, programming mathematical solutions for about 30 years, lifetime of work in, in statistical systems. They really got bored about dynamic analysis and static analysis. But when we introduced Stride to them, they really loved that idea. They were able to picture different systems. And the front-end developers told the back-end developers, well, I thought you guys were responsible for validation they were co-located in a 500 square feet office and they've had their own assumptions about very simple things as input validations. 